Good morning, happy Wednesday. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. I hope you're doing well, I'm just getting myself comfortable. I think I'm live, I'm just gonna check. Let's see, fingers crossed. Facebook's been playing up a little bit today. So um, keeping everything crossed that we are gonna go live without any hitches. That would be fantastic. I'll just give it a few minutes for people to find me. Oh, hang on, that's an old video. That's from the 26th of January, but I am wearing the same dress. How funny is that? Good morning, whoever's hopping on live with me now. Don't forget to say hello. Let me know where you are, um, how you're getting on with your Robin. I have just so enjoyed seeing your Robins coming in to the group. Aren't they fantastic? It's just such a delight to see all of these little Robin's faces popping up in the feed. It just makes it so festive and so lovely. And they are beautiful. I am so impressed. Fantastic. Um, no comments are coming in yet, but I'm hoping... Oh, here we go. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, how are you today? Let me know. It's always nice to have a little bit of a chat and a little bit of interaction so I don't feel like I'm talking to myself, which is always a little bit strange when you're in a room on your own. Um, sunny Devon today, Yvonne, lovely to see you. It's better today here, it's not as grey. It's very, very windy. I think we've got another storm coming, but it's not as wet as it was yesterday. And I think there were some snow showers as well, which fingers crossed we haven't got today. Oh, I love Devon, it's just amazing. Whereabouts in Devon are you, um, Yvonne? Good morning, Karen, lovely to see you. Just been checking my Robin, <laughs> just been checking your Robin. Going to watch again and catch up later, absolutely fine, no problem with that. Sometimes um, it's a little bit, oh, I've noticed that people are going live. Um, and I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> you're getting these little watch parties and some people are joining the video and yeah, it's just <laughs> just a little click of a button and you could be live. So, um, Sidmouth, oh yay, oh, you did say that. I love Sidmouth. We stayed at Sidmouth a lot and used to go to beer as well. Um, really lovely memories of Seaton, Sidmouth um, area. I just love it. Good morning, Lillian, lovely to see you. Morning, Ingrid. How are you all doing today? How are your Robins? I know a lot of you have done them already. I'm just trying to um, get my computer to cooperate. Good morning, Leslie. Cold but dry. Yes, yeah, very cold at the moment, isn't it? Um, but at least we don't have the, the heavy rain. The wind and the rain combo is not, not really very nice. Um, I like the cold but crisp, clear days. They're all fantastic. Hope you're all doing really well. Um, Budley Salterton, lovely Jean, how amazing, good morning to you. Um, it was so great yesterday because obviously the timings aren't going to work out for everybody perfectly, but some people were coming in in the evening from America. We had Florida, we had Wisconsin. It's just amazing that the reach of Facebook and how you can talk to people across the water uh, so easily. It's just fantastic. Um, it's lovely to have a really, really wide community. Cold but dry, just reading the comments. Oh, lovely. Did you have any problems or questions from yesterday to do with your Robin's face? Um, from what I can see, I just think they are absolutely fantastic. Such sweet little faces. You've got the texture perfectly. The colours look great. They're all blended nicely. Um, coming up into the feather detail into the top of the head. It just looks amazing. The glassy eye. I am so impressed with all of your robins. Good morning from Chester. Good morning, Shirley. Lovely to see you. Hope you're doing well. I think people are finding me now. A um, couple of people were asking for a link, no link at all, um, just popping up in the group. So you might need to keep refreshing your page. Um, it's always a little bit difficult. A couple of questions about the paper that I use, um, that I recommend. It's this one. It's the De La Roni Smooth Heavyweight um, A4, comes in A3 as well. Um, oh, I've got an A5. It's just really nice. It's a really nice thickness. I'm just 
wonder if I can kind of show you. Um, it feels not like card, but it's just got that lovely thick, thick enough with a smooth texture. So to, to begin with, it feels really smooth. But once you start drawing on it, you can see the tooth of the paper, which is perfect for layering, perfect for coloured pencils. But it also takes water without buckling, like even some watercolour papers that I've used have buckled with less water than this one does. It does a little tiny bit, but you can always flatten it out after, and I really would recommend that. So you don't want anything too textured. You don't really want to be able to see with your naked eye the troughs in the paper, because then it's just too soft and spongy. They're generally for real watery, um, maybe inks or watercolours where you're completely covering the page with water um, so that you're getting that bleeding and an even coverage for maybe backgrounds but if it's too textured it will just show up through your drawing which is um, a little bit uh, a little bit of a shame really because sometimes you get patterns running through sometimes a little bit of graininess with some little dashes and lines adds, adds to the texture but if it's too grainy, then it just creates a pattern, a, bit, a little bit like canvas when you're painting and you can see the hash. And a lot of people, a lot of artists, I've done it myself, you put gesso over the top and then sand it all down so you get a lovely smooth finish to begin with. And I think it just feels a lot better to be able to paint or draw on. Um, I do like using acrylics occasionally. Not enough at the moment. Um, there's so many things I do want to do. Oh, good morning, Carol from Sunny Kent. Fantastic. I reprinted the photo, made it bigger to see better. Yes, sometimes um, I think this Robin's kind of looks a bit life size. It's probably slightly bigger than life size. Um, there's a bit of a, a balance between uh, printing it off small so it takes less time. Last Christmas I did quite a bigger, a much bigger Robin, so you could get a lot more detail in, um, but obviously it takes a lot longer to do. So it's a bit of a, a toss up between the two. Um, and of course you can change it on your printer settings if you wanted a, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Good morning, Nisha, good to see you. Lovely to see all of your Robins. So any questions that you have, please put them in the comments and I will answer them as we go along. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of housekeeping to begin with. Competition, if you want to be entered into the competition, then there's three things that you would need to do. That is to like or love this video. So you just need to click on the little thumbs up button. And if you hover over it, then it gives you a choice of a little heart or a little caring or an angry face. Hopefully there won't be any of those. Um, so that's how you do it. A couple of people have asked me about that. And if you just click on the little speech bubble for a comment, if you could comment, even if you just say good morning, it just pushes the video out to more people. And even within this group, um, only about 5% of people see the actual posts that you put up. So sometimes if you're feeling like your posts that you put up in our group aren't getting enough likes and loves, it doesn't mean that it's not a beautiful piece. It just means that people haven't seen it, which is the unfortunate thing about um, social media in general. I'm getting beeps and things going on, so I'm just making sure I'm keeping up the comments if there are any questions. And the third thing to do is to put your Robin up. Either you can message me directly if you feel a little bit shy, or you can post it in a separate post, or you can post it in the feed um, in the comments of this video. And um, don't forget to put for today, hashtag Robin2. It just makes it a lot easier for me to search when I'm putting your names into the prize draw. So if you like or love, you'll be entered once. If you comment, you'll be entered twice. And if you draw your Robin and really implement some of the things that something's come up. Um, yeah, somebody wants to be in my video. See, this is the thing. I think there's a new button. It's changing all the time. Um, so I really want you to be able to start putting pencil to paper with the things that I'm talking about in these workshops because that's the only way that you're going to start noticing a difference. And also, sometimes we can think about the theory and um, it all makes sense. And until you put that pencil to paper, you don't really get a feel for what I'm talking about. Um, and then you can, if there are any questions that come up, um, if there's anything that doesn't really feel right or you just wonder if, if something, um, a little tweak that you need to make to make it a little bit smoother or better, then um, this is a good opportunity to ask because obviously we're going to be live tomorrow as well and you can 
um, ask me any questions in today's workshop as well. The prizes are one month's free membership in my new The Joy of Drawing membership, which the doors have officially opened. How exciting. We've had some joiners already, which is really exciting. I'm going to be opening the Facebook group on Friday um, so that we can get to know each other a little bit more. And the second prize, I'm going to be sending my favourite paper, um, great all-rounder, great starter paper, along with a m and pencil sharpener and either a Tombow, I can't remember what I bought, or a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser, which are two pieces of the toolkit that I just could not live without and it's a really good place to start. Obviously you need your pencils but a pencil sharpener is pretty crucial, um, an eraser definitely crucial and obviously this medium which I adore, I'll be sending that to you, a little Christmas special package. So just to talk briefly about the membership if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, I put the link in the description box, it's going to be uh, tutorials I'm going to be adding a project every month but I'm going to be adding the sections weekly because I do think that if I put them all in together then it can be a little bit overwhelming and I want you to work in bite-sized chunks if you want to do more then the videos will follow on but it just feels like a really good way to encourage you to make time for your regular creative practice which is so crucial to well-being it slows you down it's great for you physically but it's also really important for you mentally uh, to be able to slow down, to do something, a project, a really positive project that you can focus your brain on. It kind of drowns out all of the exterior noise that's going on at the moment that can be quite overwhelming and intimidating. And let's face it, pretty negative. Um, so something positive that you can feel a sense of achievement when you've done it and not only having a project to do but having a support system around you as well which I think more than ever we need. We need a sense of community around us, um, somebody there that's got your back. So the Joy of Drawing membership is open, the link is in the description. I would love to welcome you in. Um, I'm just so excited about this next step. I've got my art and mindset membership where I incorporate hypnotherapy and a lot more interactive sessions. We've got an art clinic tonight, um, which is an opportunity to you, for you to jump on Zoom with me. And if you're having any problems or issues with your artwork, then I can help with that. Or we can just have a catch up, which I think is lovely to connect with each other and to just talk about all things usually art related share our little wins, our little things that we've bought. So that's running tonight. We have a draw along, which is happening not this weekend, the weekend after. So a lot more interactive sessions and we've got the mindset and hypnotherapy and some Pilates actually put in there too. So there's a lot more interaction with the Art and Mindset membership. If that's something that you would prefer, then that is open as well at the moment. But the joy of drawing is kind of a, a more scaled down version. It's just the tutorials a Q&A and the ability to, to ask me questions as well, but building a community. Um, some people I know don't have time for the interactive sessions. Um, I will have to do data on catch up. Lovely and sunny in here in Essex. Oh, lovely to see you, Jennifer. Thank you for hopping on. It's always fab to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, so that's a little bit about the membership. I will talk about it a little bit more at the end. If you, if it sounds like something that you might be interested, in, obviously there is no obligation at all. These workshops are designed not only to kind of celebrate the opening of my workshop, but I want people to be able to take away lots of information for themselves anyway, to move your art forward, regardless of whether you join the membership or not. This is about kind of giving as much information as I can um, in this uh, little short time frame. Um, and then if you want more and if you want to develop and build your skills, then the memberships are there if you want to continue. Right, I think we should get going. Um, there are no questions coming in, so I assume that you're feeling okay and happy about your Robin. Don't worry about the questions if they're, you know, if they seem a bit silly, no question is silly and we all start somewhere. Don't forget that. We all started where you are now. Some people are completely new to coloured pencils and I just find that so exciting that um, you are starting this incredible journey, which I have just loved and I don't think I could have done without it. I, I just love them so much. They've never faltered in that at all. 
I love them just as much today as I did six years ago, even more so. Um, let's get going on our robin. I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm going to turn you around. I've got my light on. So I have been a little bit more prepared. That does look better, doesn't it, with the light on? So today, even though there's quite a lot of this section that I probably would want to add to, there's a lot more brown going on. There's a lot more. Oh, I've got it. Look at that. I've got a cold grey four in my hand. I am just going to add a little bit to here because at the moment it just looks like a line and I don't like it. So using these little lines, this is how to build up the feather texture on the head. I want a bit of more darkness there and they tend to go in little clumps and lines. I'm not going to spend very long on this. I'm just going to make it look a little bit more... Um, a little bit more depth to the colour, I assume. It's just funny how I had a cold grey. Four in my hand, it wasn't <laughs> um, it wasn't intentional, which just means for me it's meant to be. Um, so we're going to come down here a little bit. Uh, with the grey, and I find this with uh, any fur as well. I've got things coming up, but it's not really showing. Can you let me know if you can see me okay and hear me okay? because we can't always tell. A sip of tea. I find that with fur or with feathers, if you're using something like grey, then adding a little bit of blue sometimes, and on the reference photo, I'm sure you can see quite a lot of blue. Now, the cold greys do have blue undertones. The warm greys, more of a brown. But if you use the side of your pencil very, very softly, so you just want tiny sparing amount not lots just adding it in some places not all over then even though it might not feel that you're putting a lot of pencil down these little hints of blue will catch the eye and they will make it look much more much more shiny give it a lot more depth so I'm barely touching the paper so if it was your hand it's you're not even making a, a dent I'm just going backwards and forwards with the ultramarine and adding a little bit of blue. I'm going to add a bit more to the eye. There's more on this side that I haven't put in. So you can see how you have to go over a few times. I'm going to add some to the end of the beak. The other thing that this does, by adding colours that you wouldn't necessarily associate with um, an animal, like a blue... Um, it just pulls the drawing together. So if you add these colours all over, we're going to add this in the chest as well, in the wing. And what it does is it just pulls it all in. It's a little bit like an accent colour and it really does add to the shine of anything. So we're going to go in with a cold grey and we're going to carry on down the body. Cold grey too now. I'm just going to add a base layer with the side of the pencil coming down. Another thing to watch with this little robin, can you see on the head, my lines are pretty strong. If I were you, I would erase them a little bit. There's these little flyaway hairs that come over the edge of the line. Now, those are quite important because they're going to add to the texture. If it's too smooth, it will look like it's groomed. We don't want that. We want flyaway little feathers just to add to the whole illusion that there's lots and lots of texture going on. So I'm adding a base layer of the cold grey too. You could do a cold grey one, but I um, feel like it's not really much lighter than my cold grey two. I'm going to come down into this section as well. You we see how much of the wing that we can get done today. I don't think we're going to finish the wing at all, but what I want to do is show you the little techniques for the, for the wing feathers, which are a little bit daunting. Um, to begin with, we're just going to add a little bit of cold grey down there because it comes into the orange. All of these little things add up to that final detail. It seems like a, such a little thing, but it all adds up. So adding the cold grey, not pressing very hard at all, using the side of my pencil. And then I'm going over it a few times just to build up the layers. So you can see with the base layers, we're not adding one, we're probably adding two or three, even four. 
using that oval shape, so slowing down that kind of oval, the side of my pencil, making sure it's not going straight in, and then we're getting a lovely even coverage. Oh, I'm just missing some comments here. They're not coming up on my phone. Picture's a bit blurry. Um, I think that's my camera on my phone because it's going to come in, zoom in on my pencil. There you go. And then it will zoom in on the picture, hopefully. There you go. So it's not really anything I can do about that, I'm afraid. So I'm just keep telling me if it's really blurry and I'll try not to come too close <laughs> to the camera. We have got a bit of shadow going on, but again, it's quite a dark day. So adding this cold grey, I can see it's coming down into the wing a little bit here and I can see it's coming down into this top part. All working fine, brilliantly. I wasn't watching then, I was watching my computer and still drawing, that was silly wasn't it? It's coming down into the top of the wing and coming down here. There's a little bit here, and what I'm doing is just, whilst I've got this pencil in my hand, I'm just mentally working out where everything goes, because it can be a little bit tricky. There's an awful lot going on. We've got some lines here that have been a little bit smudged by myself. You can always put some paper over the top. But if I mentally work out where I'm going, mapping everything out, then for me that keeps it a little bit more simple and you can become quite overwhelmed with wings very easily. They look like a jigsaw puzzle and you're trying to piece everything together. So if I'm starting to map it out and work it out, it just feels that much easier for me to then move on to the next stage. So still the side of my pencil. we want all of these lovely little colours to be coming through. I might even put some down in the wing. You might have noticed in the reference photo that through the wing here there is actually sky. You can see it where the wings have got gaps in. Because this drawing is so small there's just no way I would be able to get that in. My pencil isn't fine enough. I don't have a steady enough hand <laughs> which is crucial and so I'm just going to make it look like they're together. You, the joy of drawing is that you don't have to completely follow the reference photo. You can add your own little twist to it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you wanted to draw this robin in purple and green, it would still look realistic if you get your values, which are your lights and darks, in the right place. You would still be creating form. So can you see how I'm adding grey? into the places that I can just see the start of that. Right, the next colour I'm thinking, I'm actually going to put them to the right of me today, which makes a lot more sense, is Nugget or Nougat, wherever you're from. Um, I'm just going to keep looking back at my computer. Just, if you have any questions along the way, please do feel free to ask my Nugget now. I'm going to start just lightly, very, very lightly, again, mapping out where this needs to go. I've got a line here that you can see quite defined. I would have pulled that up if I wasn't drawing for people to see the lines. But next to that, we've got a bluey grey section, and then we've got the brown that tends to merge in. It's a very gradual thing. So I'm starting to add a little bit of a layer of this nugget in the areas that I can see. The detail. We're not worrying about the texture of the feathers just yet because we're not on those final layers. We don't really need to think about that too much, especially because we're using such a light hand. If we were going in really heavy handed, then you would need to get them in. But at the moment, I'm just colour blocking, really. I'm just adding these colours, mapping out where I need to go. And like I said, for me, that makes it much more much easier to work out what I'm doing. I'm now coming down into the actual flight feathers of the wings and you can see it's made up of lots and lots of lines. I've added some little patches which are these colourful bits. You can see some yellow in there. There's one here, 
So I'm going to put that in and I'm just going to gently outline it. There's one next to it which has got lost because it's all been smudged off. And then we've got another one just below. So I'm just mapping those in again, working out where everything goes. There's the wing that comes down here and there's quite a yellow bit there. So I'm just going to map that in, align, and then mapping that feather next to it. So a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle, you do the outer edges first and then you start working into the middle. So for me, you do the easiest part first, which is you see a yellow blob, for example, you work out what's next to it. There's a brown feather. Little beeps are coming up, but the comments aren't all coming up. Then I'm going to work my way into that diagonal. And then I can see that there are some feathers on top. Down here, they're pretty much straight lines, so we can map those in. I'm personally not worried about how many there are. If you are a perfectionist, which I definitely used to be more so, I've kind of let it go a little bit now. Um, not that I'm saying perfectionism is wrong in any way, but if perfectionism is stressing you out, then, you know, it might be not doing you any favours. So it's only a problem <laughs> if it's a problem. If you feel that you are loving the detail and it fills you with great joy when you get everything really precise, then that's absolutely fine too. But for me, I think it just stressed me out really. So um, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to do what feels good. So I've mapped in very, very gently and very lightly these feathers here. So now I know where they are. And then we have two different sections. Well, we've got the tail for a start. And then we've got um, this long section, which if we look at that yellow part up here, the line comes next to it. And then we can make that defined line in the middle. That line shows the difference between these feathers and these ones up here. Okay, so there's quite a few lines actually. There's these flight feathers next to the yellow. I'm just going to map those in. And they come up a little bit and join there. And then we've got some little feathers that come out from the tail. Well, that's absolutely fine. So we've got actually a couple of lines here. So I'm going to put that in. And then in between this part and this part, we've got another really defined line that curves round. So I'm going to just add that in so I know where that is. And it comes along here. Again, I'm not worried about being precise at all. I'm just adding them in. In fact, it curves up a little bit. So this is why I'm going in with a really light pencil. We can cover this up. It's only the nugget. If we went in with a dark sepia or a black, we wouldn't really be able to, to lift it back up again. So now I'm just mapping in, following my pencil sketch here. So there's a defined line and then we've got some lines that make up this bottom section. I haven't got a steady hand at all. I'm just mapping them in. No problem if they're wobbly at all. And then these ones above that tend to be a little bit greyer, we can map those in now. My phone's, my watch is telling me to, to stand up <laughs> and sitting down. And then that merges into that top section. Okay, so we've mapped those in. Is anyone struggling with that? Let me know. Morning, Jennifer. Can I say good morning to you? How are you feeling about the wings? Would you like me to go over anything again? Basically, what I did was I looked to see where that part was. I've added these little lines in where the yellow parts are and the wings here. Where does that lead on to? Well, that leads on to quite a defined line here. All of these are quite defined, actually. They're really quite solid. We've mapped in those bottom ones. We've mapped in that middle line here. 
And then that leads us up to this top section of wing, which is a little bit more grey. And then they come down in layers, as you can see. And then we've got a defined line here. I'm going to actually make that a little bit straighter. And then we've got a couple of feathers that lead down here. And then this leads onto the rest of the body. There's a line there. Does that make sense? So once we've got these basic structural lines in, I'm just going to have a sip of tea. Because we've only used a light pencil, we can alter it, we can lift it back up again, we can adjust it, and don't forget, you don't have to do exactly every feather that's here. If it's got, you can see that it's got more than two, um, I'm not even gonna count them, then make sure there are a few more than two, so maybe five, um, because that would stand out a little bit to have just two huge feathers, but you certainly don't need to put them all in. Um, that it's just too small of a drawing you'd have to really expand on that so if I mapped in where these yellow parts are yep so just going over that a little bit so that they don't get lost they don't get smudged away which tends to happen a little bit where's that part this part I'm going by this yellow patch here we've got quite a defined line coming down here and then a different kind of feather underneath so I just want to map that one in to make sure he stands out pretty clearly. And then there's one underneath to find line here. Then the yellow comes in. So I'm just defining that a little bit. Once I'm happy with my initial lines, I can go in and just darken the ones that need to be darkened with this same pencil. This one here, and then definitely these ones down here. So does that make a little bit more sense now? I've broken it up into sections. We've got that top feather, we've got that middle section, and then we've got the feathers that have the gaps in, and then we've got these overlying ones here. I can add to the shape of them a little bit now, adding a little bit texture, and then I can put in the top section of the wings with the little bits of yellow in, just to make sure that I don't lose that, and then start to add some texture right with this nugget still that nugget in my hand I can start to build up on the browns now I've zoomed into my reference photo quite a lot and I can actually see lots of texture going on here and it's really your decision as to whether you add it or not you can make your drawing as complicated or as straightforward as you want so I'm going to start to just map them in a little bit just so I can work out where they are and this is, as I said, the second time I've drawn this robin and I didn't, didn't even notice that before. So it's amazing what you start to observe, partly when you see, when you attempt the same reference photo a couple of times, but also in general as you gain more practice and more drawings under your belt, you're going to notice so much more than you did at the beginning. Your observation skills are going to improve so much and that comes with practice and time. You know, we can't rush the process necessarily. It's about getting those hours in, definitely. So now I'm just building. Morning, Catherine, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Morning, good morning. Lovely to see you. Um... And that's why I think it's really fun to go back to the same reference photo that you drew perhaps six months ago and try it again and compare the two. I've done that quite often and it's amazing because you can really see how far you've come. I'm starting to add little lines now into the feathers because we're starting to think a little bit more about texture. There is a line at the top here. I just pointed at my reference photo, which you can't actually see. So I'm just going to define that a little bit with the nugget. And then there's one here as well. We need to darken up a lot more. I'm going to add a bit more grey. I'm going to go back in with the cold grey too. And start to put the grey where I originally put it, but adding a little bit more. So cold grey too coming down. 
definitely above this defined line at the top. There's a lot of shine going on. And down onto here as well. Just blow away any fallout. Coming down into the wings here, a little bit further. And now we've defined these wings, which we might tinker with a little bit. I can add some gray into here. And this is mainly so I don't forget to put it in. If I put the brown in, it's gonna be difficult to put the gray on top. So if I put a little layer of gray now, I can add brown next to it and it won't be completely lost. I'm gonna do the same with this wing here. And coming down and then this part here. Right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in like a yellowy color. And I'm going to put those yellow spots in. I'm gonna use the Naples ochre and I'm actually gonna put them in so I don't forget them. I'm gonna put quite a lot of color in. So these are little landmarks, I suppose, little areas that if you walk away from this drawing, you would know where you were and you would know um, exactly like the next steps. I think if we put these in, then it makes a little bit more sense to your brain to work out where everything is. So we've put that yellow in. We need to define it a little bit more here. It gets a bit darker under that wing. So adding a few layers, not pressing any harder. I'm just going backwards and forwards. Adding a little bit more to the top. And don't forget, once we've got all of the other colours in, this yellow is going to fade a little bit in comparison. The colour is always relative to what's around it. So now we've got those little yellow parts in, we can see what we need to do next to it. So back in with the nugget and I'm going to start to actually, I'm going to change to Bista. Nugget and Bista are the my two kind of go-to mid-browns. I think that they are really beautiful and natural. And you can't really go far wrong with them. So I definitely say that I would get the nugget in the bister and put that in my toolkit. Because they, um, I use them all the time. So this bister is a little bit more of a rich, yellowy, chocolatey brown. The nugget is a bit greyer, so there's a combination of both. I'm going to add this bista where I can see it, which is to these wings as well. A little bit of colour in there. We will be defining those a lot more later on. A little bit in these feathers here and a touch in here. And then we're going to come up and start building up the browns. So it'd be very easy to go in and, and straight away add lots and lots of browns in one layer, but by adding all of these little subtle color changes, you get a much deeper, um, much more depth in your drawing. I think, it, I think it makes a big difference. So this is when I talk about slowing down um, and not rushing the process, not trying to get to that next part where you finish it's about just enjoying where you are and not rushing it at all enjoying the process enjoying the little dashes and lines that you're making and i've found over the years that the more i slow down the more i enjoy it just adding these little textures and then i'm going to add a few little lines to these feathers just to define them so we're getting brown in now. I'm actually gonna go in with the dark sepia and I'm just gonna start to map in where the really dark lines are. Now I've got them in and I'm sort of happy. I can be a little bit more definite with a darker color. So I'm gonna put that little line in and then I'm gonna come down and just darken up that little section there. I want some definition between the feathers. I'm going to add some definition to these ones as well. So darkening up the edges. And 
you'll start to see it come to life, start to create a little bit of form. Coming down into this one, so we can edge that one as well. See, I'm changing my initial sketch a little bit, but basically we had the lines where I wanted them. That doesn't mean that they were in the, the right place necessarily, but they just made sense to me. Everyone's going to be different. Just defining next to the yellow here and coming down, kind of splits off into two. So that makes a little bit more sense. We have quite a lot of definition up here. So I'm going to just add some little lines in. I'm keeping a sharp pencil here and I'm adding a little bit of texture so that we don't forget where that comes in. And then there's a line next to it and then quite a defined, not all the way across the feather, just at the end. And then we have got quite a few defined lines here. Um, there's one that kind of comes down and back up again. And then defining the one next to it just to make it relatively straightforward. And then we could keep going, but I think um, I'm not going to put all of the lines in yet. Defining this part up here, there's a little shadow whilst I've got this dark sepia in my hand. And I'm not using just a straight line. So I don't just want to draw a line in. I'm using little dash lines and then we get that feathered edge. So this is how you create the texture in the feathers by just adding broken up lines as opposed to just drawing a straight line. So defining this a little bit, adding a bit more feather texture, especially in that left hand side. Um, following on through, there's a little bit there. There's a break in the feathers here. That one's in and then I think we need to think about so we've got those in and then what does this one do well there's a dark part here and then it comes down here so I'm making that feather a little bit larger and then I'm going to define that dark feather again it's a landmark it's something that we can look for I'm going to add a little curved line there and then we can crispen everything up and make everything a little bit more exact later on just adding that dark feather in and then defining that line next to it which comes kind of blends down into I'm gonna say that feather doesn't necessarily have to be defining these lines a little point there and then we're gonna come down into that feather or the edge of that feather which is next to the yellow and defining that a little bit with this dark sepia so you can see that's starting to make a little bit more sense now. We can add this dark sepia underneath. It's really important that we get a big enough shadow under the wing because there is going to be quite a lot of shadow created by that wing and that's going to make it look like it's standing forward and the body underneath is set back a little bit. Right, so now we're going to build up through the browns. I'm going to go in with the nugget again and the greys. We now have everything mapped in. We can start to build on it. So I'm using these little dashy lines, just thinking about where the brown sections are and leaving out any really light sections where we need to add perhaps a bit more grey. Darkening up here, little lines. You can see we're getting a little bit of texture now, little flyaways as well. I do love that kind of sound of the pencil hitting the paper. This is when you get into flow. Once you've mapped everything in and it's starting to make a little bit more sense in your mind, and that might take a little while, it's not something that you can rush, then you can start to enjoy filling in the gaps. So now what we've done is we've done the edges of the piece the jigsaw and now we can start looking for areas of similar colors and then adding them all in to create the picture so i'm just defining the edges a little bit how are you getting on is it are you finding it okay are you feeling overwhelmed i'm um I don't want to go too fast for you, so do let me know.
please don't feel overwhelmed. It's um, It just takes a little bit of practice. And I can go through anything again that you are struggling with. I'm just going back in with the cold grey too. If there's anything you want me to just go over again, please do let me know. And I'm just adding a little bit more grey. You can see when we start to add brown, the grey that we've already put in, and you think you've added a lot, just completely disappears. Because you're building up these colours. You're building it up slowly, and colour is relative to the colours around it, which means that if you start putting darker colours next to it, the lighter ones are going to, if they're not white, they're going to almost disappear. So adding a little bit more grey, still using the side of my pencil. Because I've used the pencil a little bit now and I haven't sharpened again, I've got that lovely sweet spot, which means that there's a flat edge. And if I want a bit, so the flat edge is good for getting colour in one place. But if I want any detail, then I can rotate my pencil and start working on the pointy bit again. So if you always want detail, then just keep rotating your pencil and that will wear it down a little bit more evenly without you having to constantly sharpen it. I really want to build up these greys without going too heavy handed too soon. I'm going to go in with the warm greys now. As I said yesterday, when you've been using lots of colds, if you bring in the warms, you will find that it will show up a little bit more because we've almost got like an opposite colour. The warm greys have a lot more brown in them, which is perfect for these feathers. Um, they work beautifully with the browns that we've already got, those bisters. These feathers down here, they have a textured edge, but they are quite soft all over. They are quite smooth. So if we put too much texture in, you can end up with a bird that looks really spiky. Does that make sense? Um, it can look to... It's amazing how just by adding a slightly longer pencil stroke that, than is there, it can completely change the whole texture of a dog or a cat um, and definitely feathers. So length of pencil strokes is important. So really look to see how long in comparison to, you know, in proportion, your pencil strokes are. Because if they're too long, it will look long haired. And um, if it's too short, obviously, it will look much more clipped. So pencil stroke length is important, definitely. And direction is really important as well. And if you take away two things from these workshops today, then just think about those because I think that will be a game changer when it comes to your um, pieces. Think about the direction. So notice the subtle curves of the fur. Like here on the face, it doesn't just go down, it goes round and it definitely goes round the eye like a clock. Same with a dog or a cat. So you have to gently change the direction. Um, and the length, so tiny, tiny pencil strokes. As our hands get tired and as we get a little bit impatient, we are only human, we tend to lengthen our pencil strokes because you're trying to get more done really quickly. Please don't do that. I think that's a mistake I made over and over and over again. And it kind of clicked into place one day and I thought, ah, I'm rushing it. That's what I'm doing. I'm rushing it. And, and I'm making the pencil strokes too long because I want to get it finished and then I ended up with a really shaggy looking dog and it was a short hair and and it wasn't obvious it sounds obvious but it, it really wasn't so direction and length you know there's different things that you can pick up at different times if you try and learn too much all in one go it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm adding this warm grey. You can see that if I use this technique with the circles, then it softens the pencil strokes beautifully. 
If I use the lines, then we get more texture. So I'm going to use a combination of both of those. I want plenty of grey in these wings. And those lines that we put in with the nugget to begin with are now slowly disappearing. You can see that to begin with, you thought, oh, no, you know, putting these lines in, I've done one wrong. It's, it's going to ruin it. It's, you know, it's going to notice. But look, look, now we've added more colours in. They are gradually fading. So that's why it's important to get a light colour to map out to begin with so that you can quite easily cover it up. You went straight in with the dark sepia or the black, for example. Um, that would be a lot more difficult to lift back up again. Coming back up with some grey here at the top. Just noticing the subtle changes in the greys. There's a lot bluer up here and a lot browner on the wing. So a combination of cold and warm. If you want to remember the cold, just think about, you know, on these adverts when they do a... It's usually the heating adverts, isn't it? When they're, they've got a cold house, everyone's blue. Um, so that's the cooler tones. And then the warmer tones are much more brown and rich. So think of chocolate with those. So warm greys, adding some warm greys. We're getting there. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of the nugget to this wing. You can see in the middle it's quite grey, but all around the edge there's browns. So again, this is one of our landmarks that we don't want to lose because it just makes it easier for us to tell where we are. I'm adding just the brown to the edges and I want to darken up this section a little bit. We were a little bit sketchy with this line above, but that's okay. It's disappearing already. And there's actually a, a little feather here that I didn't notice that I'm going to put in. And I'm going to add some nugget to the yellow as well, just underneath. That's another way to create form. If you have a highlighted area and then you have a shadow next to it, it's quite important to put a mid-tone in the middle and then that creates a curve. If you just have a light and a dark, it can just look a little bit stripy. So what we're going for is much more of a curve to create form. So although it's important to have your lights and your darks, your values, it's important to think about those mid-tones as well. So much to think about, isn't there? What I tend to do with every piece, if I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed or I'm feeling like, I feel like I'm using that word all the time, but it's a good one because it does describe how you feel, then I think about one objective that I want to achieve with my next drawing. So I look at my art and I think, uh, Think of three good things about it. And you think, oh, you know, this looks okay. I, I quite, quite like the way that that turned out. And then possibly look at one thing that you didn't... It didn't turn out quite the way you hoped. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just in your mind's eye, you had a little bit of a different opinion about how it was going to look. Just going to refresh my page. Um, and it didn't quite turn out that way, then think about for your next piece. Oh, postman. Um, what objective you would like to work on? So if you go in and think, I, you know, I don't like anything that I've drawn in the last one, you can quite easily lose your creative mojo. You can just feel really down, really flat, but if you think about one thing that you want to improve on and concentrate on that in your next piece, for me, most of the time, it's slowing down. That's got a lot to do with why things don't quite turn out the way I want them to. It's because I've rushed it. It's because I want to get it done quickly and I'm letting that go. I'm making sure that I am looking at my reference photo more than I'm looking at my own piece. And I'm taking my time and slowly building it up. So you can see we're starting to add, you can see it's starting to look like it's curving. Does that make sense? Your little nuggets of information. Oh, thank you, Leslie. I hope it helps. And I hope I don't just jabber on and you're thinking, what on earth are you talking about, you strange woman? Um, 
I don't watch the videos back because I think I'm just going to have my head in my hands. I think, oh my goodness, what on earth were you going on about? What I'm trying to do is think about how I feel, not only at the beginning, but when you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed, your confidence is lacking. How can you make that better? How can you improve that? What would lift your mood right now? What do you need? And I think if we can break it down and make things a little bit more easier to digest, so bite-sized chunks, then we're not going to become overwhelmed. And I think that applies to lots of things in life as well. If I start to say to myself, you know, oh, it's too much, it's all too much. Whereas if I write a list and I start ticking things off, then it feels a lot more manageable. And that's the same with art. I think sometimes we imagine our artwork is meant to be easy. You know, it's meant to come to you easily. And there are parts of it that are great, but people can become so disheartened with it. And I think that's because they're just putting too much pressure on themselves. The last thing I want, sorry, I'm going back in with the dark sepia and I'm just adding, even though I've added dark sepia already, because I've added lots more layers now, it's disappeared. So that's another thing to think about, you know, don't add things and then think I've ruined it, I've messed it up. You haven't because the more you put on, it will just start to disappear. Um, nothing's a mistake, just a happy accident as the late great Bob Ross would say. He's so, so right. So adding the dark sepia into these darker parts again, adding some definition because they tend to get lost, some texture with lines. And here again, so you can see how slow the process is. Of course, you could speed it up. Um, of course, you could go in and... But for me, if you speed it up, you... I, the faster I go, the more kind of panicky I feel. You feel a little bit anxious then, you know, with that speed. So if you think about slowing down and what that does to your heart rate, what it does to your mind, then I think that's much more beneficial for you. That's getting there. And don't be afraid to be really proud of yourself. I think too much of the time, we are so good at putting ourselves down. What's that all about? It, is it, you know, worried about sounding like you're blowing your own trumpet, which I definitely get. Um, but I think you can be humble and be proud of your work or your achievements at the same time. I don't think it's one or the other. I think be proud and pat yourself on the back and say, I am really pleased with how this turned out and own it. Be, be proud of it, because if you don't, if you're not your own cheerleader. Then, you know, we're, we're constantly seeking validation outside and, you know, on social media and all of that kind of thing it needs to come from us. It needs to. And that's why I love this group. I do think that. You know, encouraging each other to be proud and to say, you know, look what I've created. And this group is so friendly and so lovely. Um, some fantastic people in here. No, no meanies at all. Well, I wouldn't allow it, really. They would be gone. But I, they're just such lovely, lovely people. And lovely people tend to attract lovely people. And so please do feel comfortable to share your work and be proud. Be proud of your style. Be proud of how far you've come. And we can all cheer each other on as well. So I'm adding some darkness now. As I said, you know, getting these dark lines in is important and then adding a mid-tone underneath and I'm using the same color which might be a little bit confusing but it all depends on how hard you press so either you can burnish which means that you're just pushing a little bit harder on the paper to flatten the tooth which means that it's going to be darker but it does mean that you're not going to be able to add 
many layers on top. You can add a couple, you can glaze a little bit and burnishing um, creates a little bit of a shine, which in some ways is quite good. Sometimes you don't really want it. But I only burnish if I know I haven't got anything else to add. So I'll usually burnish an eye because I, with the black to finish, I'll go really press really, really hard. And then you get that shiny look. And then I'm using the same colour to just go lightly and use that little circular technique, the glazing, to add the mid-tone. So completely different techniques using the same colour. Pressing harder to get that line because I know I'm not going to need to go or, or not need to add much on top. And there you go again, adding that line, burnishing here. Now here's a little bit complicated and I think I've made a little bit of a boo-boo here or a happy accident because there's fluff from the feathers that comes over the top of these wings and you can't see a defined line. So that's when the erasers come in and the slice tool, which I want to introduce you to, um, I didn't put it in the notes because if you've used it before and you absolutely love it, then you carry on. But some people haven't heard of it and haven't used it yet. And I didn't want to add too many different things all at the same time. But I'm going to introduce you to it in a second. But we need quite a few layers for that to be able to work. So hopefully I'll be able to get enough in. I'm just going to add some more nugget to these wings here. Now we've burnished those lines. I want a little bit more brown. It's darker at the ends. And I want that mid-tone on the edge. So we've got our dark line of our dark sepia. And then I want to just put a little bit of um, this brown next to it. And that creates the curve. So not only am I going over the line that I've done, I'm going outside of my line either way to create a shadow. Does that make sense? Darker at the edges. And we'll go in with a different colour there as well. And then I want to add some more nugget to the edge of this lovely feather. This one's quite soft. And then we're going to add some, what should I add? I think I'm going to use the, where's my warm grey? Where's my warm grey five? I've lost my warm grey six. Is it in my hand? Nope. Ah, here we go, warm grey six. Sometimes you can't see for looking, can you? I want this warm grey six just to add a little bit of detail in, a little bit of texture, so the lines again, that I probably wouldn't be able to allow to show up if I just use the nugget. So I'm going over these lines, these little guidelines I put in with my nugget, with the warm grey six, to be able to map these feathers back in. But this time I'm using a feather texture, so little lines, and then we can see it show up a little bit more. Does that make sense? Hello, oh, morning, Nicola. Lovely to see you. So impressed with your robins. I think they're great. So this warm grey six is really good way of getting these lines to show up. But don't worry about going too dark because, as you could see before, they kind of disappear the more we put in. So adding these lines in, we've added them with the dark sepia here. There's some next to it that I haven't put in yet. And then there's a line here, there's quite a lot going on. Um, some lines here, making sure that they're going in layers. Some little dark edges there, next to that part. Just adding this in everywhere that I can see. What's going on here? I need to do something. Um, I'm going to add a line in, a little jaggedy line. I might 
not necessarily be in the place exactly where it is in my drawing, in the reference photo, sorry. But what I want to do is add in some of the lovely detail that's in there with not worrying about putting it all in. I'm going to go in with the cold grey too. And the reason I put that line in is because I want some grey above it. So cold grey too, adding more layers of grey. They seem to have disappeared again. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? I think partly is because it sinks into the paper and partly because of all of the layers. So those lines that we've just put in, we can soften with this lighter colour. It doesn't get rid of them. We don't want to do that. We still want the texture, but it just softens them. So it's not so, such harsh lines. It doesn't look like a spiky bird. It looks like a soft feathered bird. Underneath here as well. Can you see how that just softened everything? Add some grey to these wings again. A little bit of grey here. Starting to notice more and more the colours that are showing up back and forth with the grey. More grey here, softening these lines. So when artists talk about layers, this is what it is. It's building up slowly. It's not going in with the one colour that you can see and kind of putting that all over. It's about building it up nice and slowly to create... Sure. Getting there. All right, what colour should we go in with now? I think we'll go in with the nugget again and start to add a little bit more. So where we've got those textured lines, we're just going to build up on the edges of those, darkening them up a little bit more because there's a lot more brown in this area than there is grey. But we've got that grey in, which is nice. It's not got lost at all. Building it up into these feathers down here next to the yellow. There's a grey patch on top of that one. So I'm just going to add some brown in there. And adding, missing out that little grey area. And there's a grey area here. It's not as fat as I've got it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of brown above. And then we need to blend this into the neck. At the moment, it's looking like it's got a completely separate wing. And then adding it down here into this section as well. I want that grey section to stand out. There is a little bit of brown in it. So adding, whilst I think about it, there's a bit of cold grey in here. And then going back in with the nugget. Mine has got a flat line here, which I don't like. So I'm going to curve that a little bit. And then we can add the um, little bit of bista on top as well, just to create. And then in with the dark sepia, just to add a little bit of darkness to that edge, that curve that we've just put in. It comes up there. I just don't want it to look flat. I want it to look rounded. And like we've got a 3D robin, not that we've got a little flat kind of cut out robin. We want the depth. We want the um, the shadows, the, the real darks where they need to be. So going back in with the dark sepia and just darkening up. All of these areas that have a little bit more darkness. To begin with, it looks like you're going too dark and think, oh no, I'm going to muck it up. Don't worry, you're not, because we're going to add mid-tones in to balance it back out again. Just adding these lines. This is my least favourite part, these lines, because I don't have a steady hand at all. Um, so if you do have a steady hand, you're going to find these absolutely okay. Right, going back in with the bista and just adding a little bit of bista to these. Areas here. Lovely chocolatey brown. What time is it? Blimey, where's that time gone? 
absolutely flown. See, this is when you get into flow. You can lose hours. Adding a little bit more here. I think I might add a bit of vista here, just to the edges of these feathers, just for a little bit more texture, a little bit up here. Not joining on this robin's head and body at the moment. Right, a little bit more cold grey. I think I'm going to move up to a cold grey three. Just to add some more into the grey parts. I'm going to add a little bit next to the head. And then coming up here. We need more texture in there, definitely. But for now, I'm just going to colour block and add the two together. <laughs> They're not completely disjointed heads. Adding plenty of grey into the wing here. And a little bit down here. You can see we're starting to smooth where needs to be a little bit more smooth and starting to add texture where it needs it as well. Get cold grey three into that wing. These wing feathers, these kind of long ones that go back, they definitely need to be smooth. So you need to get rid of the graininess on these with your greys and your browns. Adding a bit more here. And then some more grey into these, just to start to finish the look so it looks smooth. And starting to come to the finishing line now, we just need to define some parts. That edge there, so adding a lot more grey. Should we go from here? I think I don't want the. I think I'm going to go back in with the nuggets. I was going to go in with like a Van Dyke brown or something, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So adding a little bit more texture throughout the feathers with a line. All those little dashes and lines coming down into the neck, coming down into here. Make sure that you're keeping your pencil lines the right length. You're not kind of getting a bit carried away and doing long pencil strokes. Because that will really notice in the long run. It will really show up. You have a shaggy robin. So adding a little bit of brown to the grey that will be. Adding some nugget to these edges. You can do lines. Defining some edges. We want to define the edges of the yellow. So I'm going to do that now, just going over a few times, just crisping it, crispening it up a little bit. Same with that one on a bit of a slant. And then this one has a line going through and then darkening up next to it. Definitely crisper underneath. Same with that side just tidying things up a little bit as well. I think that always helps. And coming down, a little bit of warm grey. I've got them in my hands now, warm grey six. I'm going to just add some shadow. So adding some glazing underneath. This is a good way to add shadow without losing the colours that you've already put in or the texture. Very, very, very light hand. And I either use dark sepia or I use this warm grey six usually or warm grey five. So what this is doing is just adding shadow in. So again, creating form, making sure that the feathers look like they're lying on top of each other and are not just completely flat. So I'm going over these little jaggedy lines that I've already put in and darkening up and defining them a little bit more. Some of them are very liney, which is good. You can put those lines in. Broken up, so it looks like lovely texture. And some of them are a little bit smoother. We've got broken up feathers here, a little bit broken up there. Defining these sections, these little curves. 
come all the way up here, then a line comes in there, which I haven't put in. So you can see, I, you know, I just didn't notice these the first time I drew it. I don't think I zoomed in enough. And it depends on what you're looking at your reference photo on. I'm looking at it on a, like a little Kindle thing at the moment. And I've got it right next to me and zoomed in, whereas normally I have it on my PC. And it's a little bit further away because you can't get as close. So that does make a difference to how much you can see as well. So you can see now, just by adding a little bit of this warm grey, we've created an awful lot of texture in the wings. Can you see I'm avoiding these lines? I'm just avoiding them. <laughs> so I don't like them. So I'm defining that line a little bit. Defining that line a little bit. Ugh. And then I'm going to define, I'm just going to go for it. What's the worst that can happen? I draw a line in the wrong place. It's not the end of the world. There you go. These are a little bit less defined, actually, so that's quite nice. That bit there, they're a little bit more defined towards the, the closer you go in. And then this line is really dark. And a bit thicker than I have it here. There you go, that wasn't so bad, was it? I want to define these edges as well. Tidying up these wings. I think we could probably spend another hour on this, really. Um, if we had an hour. So that's what I would do. I'd put those lines in. I don't think I'm going to do all of them because I'd want to get really close to my paper and I can't do it with my phone in the way. I might do that one, which will be easier. And then just don't forget these ones down here, these little feathers in the background. You can just map those in whilst we've got them. And as I talked about at the beginning, it's really important to define your edges. So darken the shadows, darken under here, so it creates a shadow onto the body. And obviously we need to put all the other feathers in. But just mapping in where the shadow is, is going to create that illusion that this wing is sitting on top of the body. The brown, that's annoying me a little bit, comes up into the orange just in this section. And then I just want to add, whilst I'm here, a little bit of cold grey four up into the neck. Just want to join these two bits together. Add a bit of detail in there. So pushing a little bit harder, not much, but a little bit harder for defining the shadowed parts. Coming down here as well. I'm going to go in with the warm grey six and just to find this little bit. So again, that it looks like it's standing out on top. Just a few little lines is all it takes to create that depth. Defining the edges a little bit, adding some texture. Oh, I was going to introduce you to the slice tool, wasn't I? I know some of you have already used it. I'm not sure it will show up that well because we've still got a few layers to add. So just adding some texture. We are in the final ones. Just going to darken up this little wing a little bit. And the edge there. Like I said, you could tinker and tinker and tinker with this. Adding some bister. And to that part underneath. Miss that out completely. And nugget. I'm going to define the edges with the, where's my dark sepia? Here. So to, to darkening these edges here, defining them. That's really dark in there. So don't be afraid to darken up, to go really dark, because that's how we create that illusion of depth. So shadow in here, shadow underneath. 
you might even need to go in with a little bit of black later on. Look how much darker that is. And you could think, oh my goodness, it's too much. But I think it's good in the long run. I think it adds to the depth. Right, the slice tool, hopefully it will show up. We've got enough layers. This is the slice tool. Um, I like the thin one, the pen cutter, and I like the one that stays out. So I think this one's called the manual, not the retractable. The retractable is annoying because you do need to have it out all the time. You don't need to have your blade all the way out, um, but that might be helpful for you. And it's a ceramic blade, so it doesn't cut you, which is even better for clumsy people like me. But what this does is it just creates texture by scraping away some of the pencil that you've put down. So I'm going to just show you. Let me zoom in. So you can already see I've added some texture with the feathers. But if I just wanted to add a little bit more, I would not go in like a pen. So you're not slicing. You're using the side and just scraping. Can you see that? Is there anywhere that's going to actually show up? Here on the edges, maybe in the head. I might be able to go up here, a little bit here, maybe in the face, a little bit of texture. Can you see how that just lifts it up a little bit? So you're aiming just to get the same texture that you put in with the pencil, but this time you're, it's like the opposite, you're scraping it away, but you're using the side. Can you see? going to zoom in can you see on my the end of my no you can't really see ah there you go the end of my pen cutter there there's a little bit of pigment scraped away so I'm scraping it using the side and I can add even more texture once you love this and you work out how it feels you are going to go a little bit mad and start scraping everything away and you'll end up scraping away half your drawing. I can guarantee it because it's just so much fun. You don't want to put it down. Please don't go straight in with like a knife. You put it to the side, rotate it to about a 45 degree angle and then you scrape away like that. Like you used to peel potatoes before you had the um, speed peelers that you've got now. So you're not aiming to cut the paper at all, you're aiming to scrape. This works beautifully on drafting film, which is another texture that um, is brilliant for coloured pencils. It's great for fur, feathers, everything. So I think, what time is it? Oh yeah, blimey, it's almost 12 o'clock. So I think I'm just going to um, zoom in and show you how far we've got of a shine on the um, camera there and then I'm going to turn you around there you go oh that was a bit close wasn't it oh so how was that how did you find it I hope that wasn't too overwhelming um, I have filmed the whole thing it's six hours so you can imagine how long it that's the whole drawing with the berries as well i've actually filmed that and voiced over the whole thing a little bit like these workshops but just more so so if you're enjoying these and you'd like a little bit more then it is in the membership right now the joy of drawing membership i've got the full tutorial with the materials list line art reference photo every tutorial i upload i put that in as well um, i've also added into the new membership um, which is also in the other membership some short videos on how to hold the pencil, how to blend the pencils, how to use a slice tool, how to, um, what else have I done? Different pressures, another video. I've also done two videos, one on papers and which papers I'd recommend for what types of projects and which pencils as well, another video on that. So I've got lots in there to get you started. If you're a nervous beginner, then don't worry, I've got your back there. There are videos that you can watch over and over again because every time I find that you move on in your journey, it's not like a circle, it's like a spiral. So you add layers as you learn. So what you didn't need to know, you won't take in. Um, it, will be, it will be too much at the beginning. 
um, and then as you grow you'll start to hear little other bits of information and it will start to spiral up into your journey so I found that these videos are really helpful because they um, you can just keep referring back to them. I've also got a video on how to get your initial sketch down onto the paper. A lot of people now have got these light boxes, which are amazing. I think I'm missing something there. Um, but if you do want to learn your freehand skills as well, uh, tracing is not cheating in my opinion. I think it's a valid learning tool. Uh, the more you, I, I, the, the way I look at it is if you drew something out and it was wrong, say, you know proportionally wrong then your brain is kind of absorbed that it's a bit wrong you you might not notice what bits are wrong if you trace something and it's accurate then muscle memory kicks in and then you're what you're doing is that you're drawing something accurately the more you do that the better your freehanding skills are going to be because you're imprinting into your brain an accurate drawing um does that make sense? So if you do want to learn how to draw freehand, then tracing is definitely a good learning tool for that. And there's absolutely no uh, pressure to be able to draw something accurately freehand. You know, it's whatever you want to do. So that's why I put the line art in just as a learning tool. The line art is there as a guide for you. It's not... Um, some people want less lines, some people want more lines, some people want it bigger, smaller, whatever. It's there as a guide and you can add to it or take it away. Um, so don't be, you know, don't take it to, um, you know, that my line, because I'm going to see things differently to you. Um, and also I've been drawing, you know, I've done so many drawings over the years that sometimes I think, well, I don't even notice that line because I'm not going to need it necessarily and some other people might. So is there as a guide for you to add to or take away? Completely up to you. Everyone's completely different, but it's there for you as a tool to learn. I've completely lost my video. Um, another good session really, oh, I'm so glad I'm gonna put my glasses back on so I can actually see what I'm doing. Feel like I've done an exercise class. <laughs> oh, Karen, it's taxing, isn't it? In a very different way. Loved it. Can't wait to get started, Heather. Oh, I'm so glad. Another good session. Nisha, enjoy drawing along. Thank you. So, who drew along with me? Let me know. Post your pictures and let's see how you're getting on. Thank you, uh, Karuna. No problem at all. My absolute pleasure. I do love these videos and I really hope that I can help people to move on in their pencil journey. Um, and if you want to work a little bit more, if you like these workshops and you want to carry on, then the memberships are there for you um, if you want them. Don't forget, I also have a one-off tutorial available, the Kingfisher. I don't have the Kingfisher here to show you, um, but it's in the group. I might add that link as well. It's a one-off tutorial. So it might give you a little bit of an inkling into what the tutorials are gonna be like if you don't wanna to commit to the membership just yet but I hope I've given you lots of tips and techniques to take away. Exhausted. <laughs> oh no. Oh, maybe have a little nap now, Leslie. It's a lot to take in. Um, that's what I mean about the spiral. Don't become overwhelmed. Take maybe two, what are your two, two takeaways for today? Type it in the comments now. What two things are you going to really hold on to for the next few weeks and months and to implement into your drawings? What two things would you say? Can't wait to draw later, Nicola. Oh, lovely. Um, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I exhausted you. I feel a little bit exhausted in a kind of <laughs> excitable way. Um, it's just been so lovely. You drew, Leslie. It's, we did quite a lot today, didn't we? We got the wing done. Um, nearly. I will post my picture later on as well just so that you can zoom in and have a little look at the pencil strokes. Patience and observation. Beautiful Leslie. Fantastic. Definitely patience. I think patience is um, not just about how you are outwardly to the people around you because that's what I think about when I think about patience. Have I shouted at my children today? Have I lost my temper? Have I lost my patience? Um, or do you turn it internally and think about how patient you are with yourself? Because I don't think we do that enough. Are you being kind to yourself? 
we always kind of, you know, if the kids have been on and on and on and I say, oh, yeah, put your socks on. Um, I feel like I've lost my patience, but I don't apply it to myself. And I think that's just as important, if not more so. I didn't draw long, but I did have the robin looking in the, oh, how lovely. Oh, that's really lovely, Nancy. Fantastic. Let me know what you've taken away. I think I've learned a lot today. You never stop learning. You never get to the point where you think that, um, you know, you're there. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, if I just did that, then I feel good. When actually the journey is what's important. It's all too easy to draw what you think should be there. Definitely. Rather than what's actually there. Yep, I think you're absolutely right there. A lot of the time the brain kicks in, the rational thoughts kick in and you just start to unpick what you, you draw what you think you know and it starts to just not work for some reason whereas if I disengage that side of my brain I just slow down take a breath learn a bit of patience um, really look at your reference photo don't just glance at it really look at it take a bit of time to study it and think oh and I think it's one of those things about when you start getting into that mindset, whenever I see an animal now in real life, I think, oh, how would I draw that? How would I, what technique would I use for that first? It's sad, isn't it? But I hear that with hairdressers and things like that. When they see someone's hair, they think, oh, I, I would do this to it. And it's all about having that creative. So you get into that mindset of looking at things differently and noticing how you would you would draw them so don't forget to like or love this video to push it out to the rest of the group don't forget to comment and please do post your robins with hashtag robin2 into today's um, feed you can put it into the video or you can post your own work um, completely up to you whatever feels comfortable absolutely when that's when I usually as I've not, I've not done what I wanted, did not look enough. Yep, definitely the reference photo. Probably look at the reference photo twice and draw once. Like a carpenter, measure twice, cut once. Um, oh, things are coming up. Get interrupted halfway through drawing along with you. Oh no, Shirley, look forward to catching up when I can. May have to draw it. Um, may have to, oh, it's on my phone but not on here. Oh, Joelle from France, how lovely. I'm French and don't speak the language. I adore the video. Oh, and it helped you very much. I'm so glad. I think I understood that. Um, my GCSE French, I one of my things, I would love to pick up the French and learn it properly again. I hope I've understood. Um, my absolute pleasure, lovely to have you. Um, are you watching from France? Um, I just it's amazing to see how far these videos and how far Facebook spreads it's beautiful um, I have absolutely adored today I've really enjoyed chatting with you it's lovely to not be on my own and um, if you have any questions later then do let me know if you have any questions about the memberships then do let me know um, but I would love to welcome you and to carry on this journey together and spread the joy as much as we can take the pressure away um, and enjoy so i think i'm going to leave it there for today have a good rest of the day i hope you're doing lots of nice things for yourself and taking care of yourself and i really look forward to tomorrow where we're going to be um what are we going to be doing? I think we'll start on the holly and I think we'll draw the berries and I really want to show you how to create a shiny berry in the easiest possible way and then we'll move on to the holly a little bit, maybe a little bit onto the branch. I probably, I definitely won't finish um, but I want to show you as many tips around texture on the branch, the holly and the berries as much as possible tomorrow so don't um, miss out on that video if you watch it on the replay do say hello and add your comments just as you're watching i've loved looking through them and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow lots of love and bye for now